Hi, this is Terry from Fabric Junction, and I'm here to show you a great old standard quilt block called Churn Dash. One of my favorites, it looks great in baby blankets, fun to do, gives you a little working with rectangles and your half square triangles. So this is a great one. If you're uncomfortable with half square triangles, this is a great one to start with. So today I'm going to show you, here's the blocks that I did for the quilt that I'm doing in the blog. And here is what it looks like as a pot holder. So with that, we'll start with our half square triangle. To make those, I use a quarter inch marking tool and I find point to point and then I use my pencil and I make sure it's very sharp and I mark both sides. And I've already done that on these and so I'm going to go to the machine and do the stitching. Because it doesn't take very long when you use this method to make your half square triangles. Now when I stitch, I stitch either right on the line or I stitch just to the inside on the seam allowance side to make sure that my half square triangles, when I press them, that they stay the size that I want them. And I am a chain piecer, so I'm always sending things through my machine all the time. And in fact, When I put these together, I actually ran all my half squares together, then I grabbed all my rectangles. So to give you something a little different, I grabbed my rectangles and I lined them up and I sent them all through the machine also. So after I put my pieces through, well, in this case, I've got to cut it away because I do have my triangles on there. I, I separate my triangle. So I separated my triangles and put them on the ironing board, but I took my half square triangles, I left them hooked together, and I send them back through the machine. Get to the end. Gonna line up my next one. There she goes. Get them all through there. Now I'd have all my pieces sewn together. I'd have my uh, rectangles sewn together and now my half square triangles. So then it's time to press. Separate. and press. So I'd grab my rectangles and I'd press a stack of those, flip those to the darker side, and now I'm going to press my half square triangles. There we go. Place my rectangles where they belong, trim off my dog ears, and I place those where they belong. And there they are. Your next step then is sewing together. Now I'm going to just sew a little bit together, just to give you kind of an idea. Okay. And normally when I sew, I actually have them right here on my table so I don't have to reach quite as far. But as you can see, it's a one piece. 
after the other. The nice thing about the churn dash is, other than the corners, you don't have to do a lot of matching, other than what we're used to. I don't have to match my half score triangle up with anything, I just place it. next. And I do the same routine every time and once in a while I get one turn but most of the time I grab from the right side, flip it so that I know this is the way it goes into the block. And if you do it that way every time it just becomes a habit and you're not as apt to turn your little pieces. Once I have it sewn together, I open it up just to double check that my pieces are in the same place, and then I would go and sew the other side. Okay, I'm going to stop here so that we can continue. The next thing I do is I cut um, one and a half inch strip. I cut on this particular case because I put in the little cornerstones, I have cut six, one and a half inch strip, six. I'm, I've got six on the brain because that's the size I need. I cut four, six and a half inch strips. There we go. My corners are one and a half inch squares. Get them on the right side. I, I sew on the ones without the cornerstones first, and then I add the cornerstones. And then there is my lovely block for my pot holder. To finish it, I have a backing fabric. All of these are cut larger than what I need. I go through my, a lot of my scraps to get my battings and my insole bright. The insole bright acts like a nice extra layer. It's got a metallic, so you cannot put it in the microwave. I don't know why you would want to on these, but you cannot. You can use one layer of these, you can use three to four layers of the cotton or the combination. But once you have those together, you place your block on the top, do as much or as little quilting as you like. On this one, I just quilted in the ditch, but you could do whatever you would like. Here is my binding. We have a video to show you how to bind on the pot holder and create the loop. This pot holder is a little smaller than the one I did in the video, so this is cut at six inches, and I fold about a half inch to a three quarters of an inch up, draw my loop, and stitch it down. So there is our pot holder using churn dash, and like I said, I hope you like this one. It's a great traditional block. It's always good in no matter what you make. Do check out the instructions at our blog site called fabricjunctionjewels.blogspot.com and our website junctionfabric.com or even stop by and visit us here at Fabric Junction in Sturgis. So with that, go and sew. Thank you for watching.